Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Inventor's Quick Tips. Today we're going to be talking about software patent claims and considerations for protecting software-based inventions. So one question that comes to mind is, is software patentable? And the short answer is yes, it is possible to protect software-based inventions with patents. Now, recent court decisions such as the Alice decision have continued to change the legal landscape. And so the best practices are continuously changing in this field. However, there are a few fundamental things that I'd like to point out to you in this video. So let's think about how software operates in the world. Software typically performs methods, i.e. it does something, and software is typically contained in some computer-readable medium, such as a CD-ROM, flash, USB stick, etc. And software is typically executed by something, a processor, a computer system, a server, and so forth. So let's take a look at an example that most of us should be familiar with, which is your typical voice assistant on your mobile device, such as a cell phone. So there's multiple voice assistants out there, Siri, Alexa, Google has one, and so forth. We're just going to use a simplified example here to illustrate some key concepts with software patent claims. So here's a typical application. Somebody says something into their phone, such as, hey Siri, will it rain today? Now let's talk about how that works, at least for the purposes of our example. Let's suppose that the user says something into their device which we'll call a client, and it digitizes the sound, maybe it compresses the sound, doesn't matter, and it sends it to the network, the internet, represented by this cloud here. From the internet, it makes its way to some speech-to-text server, and the speech-to-text server basically uh, interprets that audio sample, converts it into the um, sounds that make up English text, converts it to text, sends it back over the internet, back to the user's client device, which is in this case is the phone, and finally, it is rendered on the user's device. So, that's a use case where most of us are familiar with. Now let's think about some sample claim steps if we want to claim this. Okay, what happens? Well, somebody utters a phrase into the client, which in this case is a phone, uh, the phone then sends an audio sample of the phrase to the server, it gets converted to text, and then the text gets sent back to the client from the server. So let's draft a sample claim. And again, I'm using simplified claims here just to illustrate the point so it may not be exactly how you would expect to see it in a real patent application. So let's call it a computer implemented method for voice control of a mobile device comprising uttering a phrase into a client, sending audio data of the phrase from the client to a server, converting the audio data to text on the server, and sending the text to the client. So at a high level, that covers the steps we just talked about. Now, let's take a look at who is doing what, okay? So this is what's happening. Remember, we have the user speaking into their client device, the phone, and it's going to make its way to the speech-to-text server, which is going to send back the text. So let's do an actor analysis on this claim. Actor analysis means who is doing each step of the claim, because for a claim to be most valuable, you'd like a single actor, a single thing, a single user to be doing all the steps of our claim. So let's see how that plays out with our first cut of our sample claim. Okay, the first one, uttering a phrase into a client. Well, that who's doing that? The user of the phone. Sending the audio data of the phrase from the client to a server? Well, the phone is doing that. Remember, remember the phone is our client here. Converting the audio data to text on the server. Well, that's the server and sending the text to the client. That is the server. So here we have three different actors. We have the human who is uh, uttering the phrase, we have the client itself, the phone, and we have the server. 
So that right there is not ideal. We know we are probably going to need to rewrite this claim a little bit. We want to ask ourselves, can the claim be written to reduce the number of actors? Ideally, we'd like one actor, and ideally, we'd like the action to be happening in one place. Let's take a geographical example here where my user and their device is in Canada. So they're probably somewhere over Calgary or Manitoba, somewhere like that, right? There they are in Canada. And let's say that our server is over there. Server is perhaps in Kansas or Nebraska or something. Doesn't matter exactly where. All we know is that our server is in the United States and our users are outside of the United States. So let's take a look at a location analysis. Uttering a phrase into a client, where's that happen? That's happening in Canada. Sending the audio data from the client, where's that happening? That's happening in Canada. The conversion of the audio data is happening on the server, that's in the United States. And the sending of the text from the server happens in the United States. So we have two locations here, not ideal. Multiple actors, multiple locations. Let's see if we can somehow rewrite this claim to cover the basic idea without having all these actors and locations. So here's our original claim. Have we done it? We're going to try to do a refactor. So let's see. Here's our original claim. Let's go element by element. We have four elements. Let's start with the first one. So for the first one, I'm just going to get rid of it. Uttering a phrase into a client. We really don't need that in our claim. In fact, we can just assume that an audio sample exists. We don't care if a human uttered it, a parrot uttered it, a gorilla uttered it, another computer uttered it, doesn't matter. Let's assume we have an audio sample. So we're just going to strike that phrase. Let's go to the next phrase. The next um, phrase in the claim. Sending audio data of the phrase from the client to a server. That is from the client's point of view. We would like to flip the action to a server perspective. So how might that look? Well, instead of sending, what does the server do? The server receives audio data of the phrase from a client onto a server. Okay, so that's what's happening from a server perspective. Servers receive that information. So here's what our refactor claim looks like. We got rid of that first step of uttering. We're just going to have receiving audio data of the phrase from a client onto a server, converting the audio data to text on the server, and sending the text to the client. So let's do our who and where analysis again. Here's our claim. And the first step, it's happening on the server. The server's in the United States, in our example. The second step, converting the audio data, also on the server, and in the United States and the transmitting or sending of the text to somewhere else, in this case the client, that is also happening on the server in the United States. So we've now reduced the claim to one actor, the server, and one location, the United States. So for software claim considerations, we want to try to get one actor and one location. And that particular bullet point, that first bullet point, applies to more than just software in general. For claims of a patent, you typically want to try to get one actor and one location. So that uh, first bullet item can apply to many different types of patent claims. Now, software typically has, not always, but in many cases, has a client-server type architecture, such as the voice assistant example we just covered. So in that case, when you have a client-server architecture, it's typically a good practice to try to draft claims for both the client perspective and the server perspective. And remember, when you are considering different types of claims for your software patent application, consider method claims, device claims for the actual device that the software runs on, and a computer readable medium uh, type of claim, which is a claim to the software itself in its physical packaging. So that might be a CD-ROM, USB stick, or the like. This is the typical way that software is claimed today. So hopefully this gave you a little introduction to what goes into thinking about software claims for a patent application. Thanks again for checking out this exciting episode of Inventor's Quick Tips, and we'll hope to see you again next time.